Hello, hello. So, hi. Uh, yeah, uh, like he said, I'm John Berry, and I'm here to talk to you about the Heresy programming language. Uh, the subtitle of this talk is Learning Through Madness, and you'll see why in a moment. Uh, there's links there, of course, to uh, the language on GitHub. You can find that there, as well as the wonderful Racket Docs, and, of course, the source code to this slide show. Um, this is me. Uh, I'm John Berry. I'm on GitHub and Twitter, and I currently work for Futurize in Helsinki. So, there's a content warning. The following con talk contains a lot of things that are probably incredibly bad ideas. Uh, and I also, I'm doing this talk in 10 minutes. So if anything confuses you, angers you, uh, otherwise seems to make no sense at all, don't worry. It just means you're probably still sane. So this is the Tandy Color Computer 3. Uh, it is a 1.79 megahertz 6809 processor, and it is the computer that I grew up in with. And I'm still sort of active on some of the uh, like Facebook groups and stuff for people who still use these old machines, and somebody had posted a port of Lisp to the TRS-80, and I got to talking to somebody and about different Lisp implementations for the Tandy machines, and somebody asked me the question of, what's a Lambda? Because these are all old guys who literally never coded anything but assembly and basic. So I thought, what if there was a programming language that was designed to teach basic programmers how to program in a functional Lisp? And thus we get heresy. Heresy is basic flavored. It, all as best as possible, all keywords that previously exist in basic, we use the basic keyword for in heresy. Heresy is, of course, a lisp. We all know what a lisp is. There's parentheses everywhere, and it's great. Heresy is functional, not just functional, but almost purely functional. There are no mutable data structures whatsoever, no mutability whatsoever, not even in the implementation. Heresy is two things also really for learning and as an experiment. I created Heresy in part as well just to give myself a playground to play with all kinds of different functional programming concepts and come at them from new angles in strange ways. Also, Heresy is for everyone, uh, for all three of contributors who have ever contributed to it. We do have a code of conduct, uh, and you can find out about that on our docs. So, this is the Heresy programming language. Fun little fact, uh, I did not have to handwrite or copy and paste every bit of any of that code. It's all being generated by some racket uh, reflection code. Uh, this means that I never have to update this slide manually. <laughs> so when we're talking about basic, really what we're mostly talking about besides go to, of course, is sh shit loads of for loops. Just for loops, for loops, for loops. So, of course, we have for loops and heresy, and this is what they look like. This is your classic 99 bottles. But the interesting thing, of course, this challenge I set for myself is, well, I've got to figure out how to make for loops purely functional, so here's how you make for loops purely functional. This is what we call an exit continue. This is essentially a recursive let wrapped inside of an exit continuation that allows us to break out of it at any time. Um, short, very probably wrong description of continuations is basically it's treating the program flow as a first class value so that you can manipulate it in all kinds of probably improper ways. But then I had a problem. So how do we accumulate a variable for a, in a for loop without mutable variables? And the answer is carry and cry. So in Heresy, we have these two useful keywords. Every for loop, every do loop uh, binds carry, which is essentially a function that tells it that this is the value that we want this internal variable cry to have on the next iteration of the loop. And this little like with bit on the end here is how you tell it what the starting value is. So here, for instance, we have the for loop based solution for the classic factorial. Here's how you generate a deck of cards. Um, and this can be 
you can stick any value in cry that you want, and a list in Lisp can contain anything you want, so, oh no, I just did the forward pipe operator. This is how we do the forward pipe operator in Heresy. It is a for loop that iterates over a list of functions uh, carrying the resulting value of application, and that's how it works. So I'm, okay, we've got the F-sharp style forward pipe operator, but I'm at a closure conference, so it looks like I'm gonna need the threading macro. So we need a little helper for currying functions, and here is our threading macro, and voila, there is the closure threading macro implemented entirely with for loops. Of course, these are just helpful shortcuts. We can call the helpers too, so you can just jump around in the middle of a bit of program flow as to whether or not you want to curry on the last argument or the first argument. I don't know why or if you ever should do that, but you totally can. So I had for loops, but I also have a functional language, and in functional languages, we really like data structures, and we need some kind of, needed some kind of immutable data structure, so this is how you make one. This is how you make an immutable object with all that is is a lambda closure. It has some internal values, and we write some handy little syntax, and voila, it's a thing. Things are immutable objects with pattern matching syntax for self-copying. Um, we can describe a thing, and that thing, original iteration of that thing is immutable. It can never be changed, but we can copy it with this helpful little syntax that you see down there on the bottom. So then I started thinking, well, we've got these for loops, and we can stick anything we want in that carry value, and now we have these objects which have like names in them that contain values. And I was spending a lot of time in Haskell, so suddenly this happened. Um, here we have a little bind operator and a pass operator and a return operator and one more little helpful macro and then suddenly, here we go, we have do notation implemented with for loops again. Um, kind of a monad? I mean, but it looks a little ugly, and well, do we know really that it is a monad? Well, actually, we do, because you probably already are about to recognize what you're gonna see. This is the identity monad. And now we can do the same thing, voila. So, somehow I had managed to accidentally reinvent monads so that paper that you read on the internet is true. You genuinely could have accidentally invented monads and not know it. But wait, there's more. Heresy is the only language that I know of where the Y Combinator is actually defined as a language primitive. It's just included in the standard library. But there's a funny little thing about the Y Combinator that one of my contributors discovered, which is that in a racket especially, the argument list isn't actually multiple arguments. It's just a single argument that is a list of values. So we can generalize on that, and now we have the Y star combinator, as he called it, which is the Y combinator, but it can take functions of any number of arguments. And this results, and I got to thinking about that, well, that's really cool, but what else can we do with it? Oh, this is what we can do with it. So a little extra macro help, um, and now we have a primitive in the language uh, syntax for creating named anonymous functions. So you can write recursive anonymous functions, and there's your Fibonacci sequence done as a map. We also have some fun stuff. Uh, another little thing we borrowed from Clojure is we have an infix math DSL. Uh, it looks like that. It's pretty cool. Um, there's also, you, if you go on and look for maya.clj, um, there you go. So that's my conclusion is programming should be fun. Try things, crazy things, stupid things. 
Oftentimes, we learn the best when we sit down and tinker with something, experiment with something ourselves, and you never know what you're going to wind up inventing. Thank you. Working now, yes, now it's working. Any questions? Joseph has. Anyone else? There, to the right. I will run. Uh, that was a nice talk. Uh, did anyone learn what a lambda is? Um, the irony is, is I never. I, I did wind up sharing it with the channel, but uh, it. it it didn't exactly go the way that I intended, of course, <laughs> because it may, you may still have like string functions with the dollar sign on the end, but that doesn't necessarily mean that jumping deep uh, feet first into Lisp is easy for someone who hasn't programmed since the 1980s. Uh, and also, I never got around to, there's great docs for heresy in terms of like the API documentation, but never got around to writing a proper sort of tutorial to get new users into the language, which I should do because Bojadar told me to, um, so maybe that's what I need to do when I get home. All right, any more? If not, thank you, John. <laughs>